Hello. <laughs> Hi. Um, everyone looks full of energy for the very last talk of the day, right? Woo! Yes. Woo! OK. So let's start then. My name is Ines Almeida. I'm a tools programmer in the games industry. I work at Gorilla. And I started my career at Blender, actually. So to just give myself a little introduction. I discovered Blender about 10 years ago, started tinkering with the cube, gave up, tried again. Uh, later on, I got uh, an opportunity with the Google Summer of Code to start uh, programming for Blender, so that was uh, what really kick-started me. And I got more seriously involved uh, later on at the time of the Gooseberry campaign for the Cosmos Andromat uh, open movie, when the Blender Cloud was getting made a bunch of time ago. Um, and that's how I got to know a lot of the people at Blender, which is how this add-on came to be. So the edit breakdown idea came actually from Francesco, um, and it's a passion project uh, that we've made in the weekends that we thought would be helpful for uh, the Sprite Fright production. Um, and so I'll show you this add-on, uh, but uh, I'm going to start with the end of my presentation. I had another plan, but then I talked to people and I realized that a lot of people are under the impression that this is about the watchtower. And the watchtower is not the edit breakdown. They're very uh, friends, uh, since they both have agreed, but they are not the same. The watchtower, which you can find more information about online, is a viewer um, for like a, a task tracking, um, while the edit breakdown is much more of a tool for casting and creating the data, which can actually be then exported to the watchtower. That's a pretty useful uh, combination. So not the same. This entirely separate thing. This is about the Blender add-on version of the grid. Um, and I'll start by a tour of the features uh, with an example from the Sprite Fright edit. Uh, and so the way this would typically go is to drag the latest edit, like simply an export, the last movie file. Uh, then we need to add a color strip, and we need to mark it for use in the edit breakdown. Um, and then uh, once that is done, we need to sh uh, mark the shot transitions. So we simply play back the edit as normal, and we cut um, as normal playback speed, obviously. So it will take as long as the, as the movie would take uh, to signal every short transition. Uh, we can then prepare an area to show the thumbnail grid. So this is this in the sequencer as a preview. And we click the sync button. And then we have the thumbnails. Uh, the thumbnails can be used to um, navigate between the edit as a, as a both ways, as a kind of a shortcut to a place in the edit, or also by setting it, uh, scrubbing the timeline. Uh, and furthermore, we also have support for scenes or sequences or sets, like a higher level concept of a group of shots or maybe a story bit. So we can set them up um, uh, in, the, in, the, in that panel. And then we can uh, assign uh, shots to be as part of a sequence. Um, with the advantage of showing in the, in the timeline area much more visual indication of uh, what part of the edit this belongs to, but also to show a grouped view of the thumbnails uh, in the grid uh, by clicking this option right here. And then we have them per uh, scene. Um, and the last special trick that the add-on does are custom properties. So this is any data that might prove useful for the specific uh, edit or movie. Uh, this is an example with characters. This is, these are uh, strongly typed with predefined values. Uh, it can also support numbers or text or uh, Boolean options. Um, and then we can tag each shot as having or not having a value of these properties. Uh, the way that's typically done to assign data to the shots is with the tag tool. So I make the thumbnails as big as possible. We are now tagging where the character Ellie is. So it really helps to, to basically just see the thumbnails. It, we barely have to 
uh, scrub around to, to tag something. We've swapped now to Rex, so that's a different character. And these are all like either the shot has it or doesn't have it. So you can just hover over the shot and click uh, or press 1, uh, 0 or 1 to disable it. So that's super fast. And while after all this data is finally gathered, we can get statistics, which is the really fun part. So you can just copy it, split into columns, and then you can go crazy on it and get any kind of charts or data. Um, so to recap, that was add a color strip to the edit, slice it up to match the shots or whatever is interesting. Then you can create a grid. Uh, there's visual gripping with scenes and there's tagging of shots with data. And then you export. And I am very happy to have here some spreadsheets that Francesco shared from the actual production of Sprite Fright, so that's super cool. Uh, this is uh, one of the spreadsheets that he's used. It has like the, um, a special formula to retrieve the thumbnail data uh, that the add-on also created. You can create histograms for animation quota with it. And you also can see at, uh, at the bottom there's multiple versions as the um, production product progressed. Uh, and then there's also different focuses. So there's increasingly more data, or the data, you can see that the, the focus of the data shifts uh, depending on what was interesting to count at the time. And you can see character breakdowns. You can see uh, focus on crowd shot size, which was a concern at some point. There is uh, shot durations. You can also see. Uh, just ahead, um, as the add-on also evolved with, uh, with the spreadsheets that got created, at some point we got the, the scenes, and then you can also see the, um, I think it's this one, yeah, I'm more and more data, <laughs> um, which is also, it was always uh, regenerated, it's easier to just start from a blank edit and tag everything again than try to save or uh, match uh, previous versions. And here, the scenes start to get into um, consideration for the chart. Um, and that's what I have for the um, features. But I've also selected some uh, bits of technical interest for the behind the scenes uh, development. And the first one uh, on technical notes would be about making an entirely new view mode. So we have a grid view, sure, and now where do we put it in Blender, where, where? And I thought, well, this makes, it's a part of the sequencer, so ideally for me, I would, I would like to put it there as a new mode, but that's sadly not possible. Uh, via Python add-ons, we can neither extend existing uh, lists uh, nor make entirely new editors, which is commonly seen when someone wants to do like a new rig control editor or something like this. Um, so that's, um, that was it. Uh, what do we do instead? Well, let's put a toggle somewhere else. Uh, I tried to put a toggle somewhere also still in the sequence editor, since that can be uh, per instance of the, of the editor and toggle independently. That makes sense. It fits the UX good enough. Uh, so there I go, full of hope, add a, add a property to the sequence editor space that I can toggle. But uh, editor space data cannot be extended either, so that's also not working. I could make it visually work, uh, but the property has to come from somewhere else. So I just reused existing properties. I tried to pick properties that are used in the sequencer view, not on the preview view, so they wouldn't conflict. But it's really, really suboptimal because I'm now setting other things in Blender's data. Uh, just try to pick something, but it's um, suboptimal. <laughs> um, but in either case, we got our toggle. It works. It toggles. So how do we make the grid? And this, as far as I know, is the most uh, typical solution. And it's to just draw over the editor with OpenGL directly. So you just draw the thumbnails, everything on top. 
which is what I would like to call the nuclear option, because you just draw a big, fat, gray rectangle, a very precise gray that matches Blender's background. Uh, then you add the thumbnails, also view OpenGL, and then you add like the tags from the two and, and etc. Uh, this is called the nuclear option for a reason. It's not um, definitely not ideal for performance since the preview is still there, it's still running, and it's also still active in terms of tools. I'm just hiding it, uh, but still there. Um, but as far as I know, this is, uh, this is how, um, how it's done most of the time, and it's an interesting approach, so I, I wanted to share it here. Uh, if you would like to see more or implement your own nuclear options, please go to view.py and uh, check, uh, check those functions. Also, as a bonus, there is, if you want to like, fit, uh, fit thumbnails in a space to take as much space as possible and look nice, you can also check, uh, check that file. Uh, proceeding for the actual drawing of the thumbnails. So, um, we have a grid, we can draw it, but where do we get the actual um, thumbnail image from? Um, and this, this is done so per shot, per each of the color strips. And the way I do it is to render uh, from the sequencer nearly as normal. So it's basically a lower resolution, but it's the sequencer that renders it. And here's uh, the code how it can be done. It has a neat trick. I, I used um, that override render settings that um, applies the settings and then restores them once everything is rendered as back as it was before without damaging the setup. Uh, so then we go over each shot, uh, we render it um, pretty low resolution for the sprite thread head edit. It takes a second sometimes to, depending on the resolution. If you start increasing the resolution, then it takes, it takes longer. Um, or if you have a, a longer movie, of course. Um, and this is also safe to disk. Uh, the reason I need to save to disk is that the uh, Blender OpenGL add-on needs a bind code of Blender images to actually draw these things as, as far as I uh, figured out. So we need to have it as, as an actual Blender image and on disk so to, to also restore it, which is also goes nicely with the spreadsheets that then all for this uh, information. Um, this is not so great, however, for image uh, UI pollution because it <laughs> generates a large number of uh, images with zero users, uh, but it's, it's not great. Um, I also did not manage to, to make it sync automatically, so I have this manual sync button and then we go over all the shots and we, it's, it, I couldn't find I tried a couple of times to register to the dependency graph or the, the message bus, but there's always some missing event and something gets out of sync and I, I just couldn't get it to, to cut the strips and just pop the thumbnails uh, magically. If anyone has tips on how to do that or how to do the generation asynchronously, uh, that uh, I would be super happy to discuss that. Um, and to the next step, technical topic would be using workspace tools. And I mentioned this, um, I think this was one of the biggest struggles I had, and I believe is not very commonly used in uh, other add-ons. I've made two tools, uh, one for selection, so this tool needs to, from the mouse coordinates, know which thumbnail are we on, either from the grid view or from the grouped view. Um, and so it, it reacts to clicks, and then the tactile reacts to either clicks or the um, numerical input to set the values. And I found quite, quite difficult to get this to work because I didn't find many examples, which is why I wanted to mention here because I'm trying to add to the pool of examples. Um, it, it's not so easy to figure out how these are ideally supposed to be set uh, conceptually. The way I've done it is to have always an operator and a tool. The operator has the most of it, of the, all the action, maybe the actual tag, and then the tool has the um, uh, input uh, configuration. 
which is basically a key map. This is the one for the tag tool. So it starts with, the, with some selection, I'll get to that, and then to the values, just clicking or 0, 1, 2, puts a value of 0, 1, 2, then in the operator. So the tool is, is a very, uh, for my add-on, a very simple wrapper. Um, and I also made it so that the tag tool uses the select tool for clicking, so I won't have to repeat that, which means uh, with the tag tool on, and by I also chose to use right-click select, so I can right-click a thumbnail and left-click to set the value without having to switch tools, which was pretty fast. Uh, but I didn't find an easy way to have this more dynamic, like according to user properties or uh, um, a more dynamic configuration uh, of how this usability is supposed to go. Um, in either case, uh, sticking to these very Blender-like usability principles, the workflow is super fast. Uh, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, I would really like to have more examples and uh, viewport widgets documentation, because I think they're very cool to create this kind of um, uh, isolated um, usability modes, uh, which would, or the, with the Blender apps, that would be super nice too. Um, and then I have my last uh, technical bit, which is on uh, creating the custom properties. Um, and these are very complicated. So my personal pro tip advice is just don't do it. <laughs> I did it because I found it really fun. Um, and the, they're very, very similar to the Blender custom properties that are at the bottom of every right side panel. Um, the difference um, is on the configuration of the UI. They both have some strong, strongish. Mine are a bit stronger than than, than blenders on the type uh, checking, but they both allow setting a type, setting minimum and maximum. But if I really wanted to have the multiple choice with the enum values so of the characters or a single choice for like an assignee, which is also multiple options then. Um, and for that, I had to make quite a custom uh, property system, which took a significant part of the add-on development. Uh, so the, my learning from here is uh, don't try to do your own programming language for no reason unless you have fun doing that. It also, it was tricky to do because they're, they're ID properties and they're dynamically registered and they can be changed while they're used as well. Um, but I will not, um, I'll keep my secret secret in my free software, which you can get from GitHub. So please, if, you, if you'd like to uh, make your own version of it or to use it, just get it from there. Uh, it's free. Uh, there is no planned development, but uh, I always keep an eye on, uh, on people's input. Um, and that's it. Enjoy and share how you use it. Thank you.